Good morning. Hope everybody made it through the eclipse okay. Uh, we'll talk today a little bit about grooming. <coughs> if I can find my right brush, here we go. And uh, I like to brush a horse grooming. I always call it brushing them off. I like to end a sentence in a preposition around here, even though we shouldn't. Uh, it's first thing we do when we hook a horse. Now you'll notice Mage is a little dirty already. You know, he's got some sweat marks from the harness and collar. Uh, now, today is going to be the first truly warm day we've had this year. At the end of the day, Mage is going to get washed. He's going to get rinsed because uh, the weather's nice. Um, and uh, it feels like it should be comfortable for him. And from now on, as long as the weather's good until fall, you know, I don't have an indoor wash rack or anything fancy, and I don't have heated uh, water here in the barn. I'm, I'm going to get that because that, boy, that makes them comfortable. They just love that warm water, and I can't believe how much more dirt the warm water gets out. But anyway, uh, we wash them, we cold rinse them after every good workout all summer long uh it cleans them you know that's that's maybe a little bit of a vanity thing but it also uh uh it's like an athlete icing themselves down it just uh you know feels good on them it cools them off as, as well as it's just any injuries or sore muscles or anything they have get iced uh if you have a big joint or something on a horse it gets iced but we'll talk about that more in a little bit so the point was that he's not as clean as he normally would be throughout the summer because i just unharnessed him and put him in his stall last night normally now that better weather's here he will get rinsed and a, and a good bath uh just water we'll talk about that more later but when i groom a horse I use two basic tools, and I'm not saying this is right. This is what I always use. A basic curry comb. Any feed store, you know, harness shop, any place in the country sells them. I've always been told they're not for horses. They, uh, they're too harsh. That What they're made for is cleaning the brush. Well, I do use them for that. Uh, you know, I, I've had horses, I've owned horses since I was 10 years old. I'll be 48 next month. You know, that's, that's nearly 40 years of owning horses. And it's more than 40 years of uh, driving horses and being around them. And I've used this my whole life. And I've never seen a horse suffer from this. Uh, and to me, it gets the dirt out well. You have to use it sensibly. Don't bear right down on it in the summer when their uh, hair is short. But these are my two basic grooming tools, a brush and a curry comb. I like a little bit of a stiff brush, not ridiculously stiff, but not really smooth, soft either. Somewhere in the middle. I'll be right there. If you're, if you're at a feed store and you see brushes, I usually choose the middle ground. Uh, this is a stiff brush. I rarely use this on the actual horses. I actually, I, I clean their hooves off with it, is what I do with a really stiff brush. Or sometimes their legs down low right before I clip them. Uh, yeah, I, I find a brush in the middle ground, not the stiffest, not the uh, softest either. So that's about it for tools, as simple as it could be. But when I brush a horse, I do it in sections. So I start with their head. And they learn to love their head brush. It's even better if you unfasten the side of the hauler and get under the hauler, pull that back and do the bridle path. Actually, if a horse has a mane and foretop, I brush the mane uh, first and the foretop, and then I brush the head. So I do it in sections. The first section is the head, and I only use a brush. I don't use a curry comb. Every once in a while down here on the jowls, 
if uh, if they have a little something stuck to them, I might use a curry comb. Rare, very rare. From there, I do the next section. That's the neck. And what a neck this horse has. So I brush it, I, I groom the whole thing with a curry comb, the whole section of the neck. And then I go after it with a brush. And I get the, uh, the breastbone and brisket while I'm up here. Next section would be the from the withers down, front leg. This would be the third section. And the reason I do things in sections is uh, that way I remember. Or if I get distracted and somebody has a problem, I have to go take care of it and I come back to it, I remember, oh yeah, I've done this section. Um, so, you know, like we tell little kids, top to bottom, like the rain, front to back, like a choo-choo train. That's how I do it, top to bottom, like the rain, front to back, like a choo-choo train. So I did the withers, go right through here, the shoulders, now I'm on the leg. Get this kind of underarm area here, that's where shoe boils start. A lot of times I reach over and get the opposite leg while I'm here. A lot of times I can see part of this leg from one side that I can't see from the other, kind of the same way as clipping. And once I, uh, once I did it with a curry comb, I go after it with a brush. Just kind of loosen up any, knock free any loose hair. Now, this is where you want to be real careful with a curry comb. You don't want to bear down. In fact, I saw a little reaction from uh, Mage telling me I was pushing a little too hard. You don't want to bear down through this back. That's sensitive. You want to apply enough pressure to get through the hair and to smooth it out, but uh, you know, don't overdo it. Your horse will tell you. Again, this is uh, the fourth section. You know, the back through the belly. I'm always careful here where the hair goes two different directions. Uh, I follow the hair the whole way wherever I'm brushing on the horse. A lot of horses are real ticklish right there. And then I get the belly, starting way up under those front legs. Of course, this time of year, you know, it's April 9th. They're doing a lot of shedding. I like to knock it loose, knock the hair loose, and then clean the brushes. So that's curry combed. Anyway, now we'll brush it. And the last section on each side is the rear. Starting right up here. And a brush all the way back to the tail. Top to bottom, like the rain. So we brush around the pin bones here. Go all front to back like a choo-choo train. Side to side like a choo-choo train. Get back here. Another sensitive area. You don't want to push too hard with a curry comb there. I've tried every kind of uh, grooming tool on the market. A lot of times we'll win a pail full of tools or something like that at a, at a horse pull. They give that away for a prize. And it's very appreciated. But maybe it's just familiarity because I've used this so long. But uh, I always go back to this. Um, there is one tool that, that we got at a... At a show once, I believe it was out to the Great Lakes show, they gave away very generous with prizes out there. Not just prize money, but actual actual gifts. And I'll get that tool in a minute and, and show you. One that I do find really handy. So around the hocks, of course, be careful. Don't dig them around the hocks, but get them clinging. And half the horse is done. 
Oh, let me look for something. Okay, here's the one tool, especially in the summer where they're short haired. I really like these gloves with the grips on them. And uh, you, you really get a feel for the horse. They, they do a nice job. I like the gloves, especially in the summertime. Um, sometimes I'll use that giving them a bath and give them a rub down. Um, sometimes I rubbed absorbing on the horse with these and I haven't found it to deteriorate the gloves. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing on this side. Now, here is the biggest part of grooming a horse, brushing them off. Look at that horse. Pay attention to what you're brushing. Pay attention to his reaction to being brushed. Start right here on the face. You know, look under the nose band. Make sure that's not leaving a mark on his face. You know, these guys are in box stalls. Their halters are off. You know, I always take the halter off when I turn them outside. You rarely, if you find a mark on a nose band from one of our horses, it's, we bought them that way. Um, our horses just don't spend a lot of time in a halter. But that's one place you look for sores. You look up here at the, at the top of the pole, up here on the bridle path. You know, when you're grooming that. This might be the most important part on the whole horse. You know, more than grooming the horse, we're checking him. This whole neck area, from top to bottom, check it. See how his reaction is, you know. Doesn't bother Mage, but if he had a little beginning of a sore up here, that would bother him. You know, sores happen at the very top, about two thirds down, and at the point of the shoulder. And that's where sores happen, and from collars that are ill-fitting, or draft that's off, or hames that don't fit the collar. And um, that's where you watch when you're brushing. You know, pay attention to the breastbone here. Maybe a horse was leaning over a manger or something and could have got a sore. This is their favorite part to be brushed, their withers. Uh, that's because uh, that's where mamas brush their, groom their babies. That's where horses groom each other. That's where they say hi. So also, it's a good place to rub a horse and pet a horse. You know, pay attention to your horse's body condition while you're grooming them. Make sure he's about where you want him to be or her. You know, if, if you want a horse on the, the number six on the body condition scale, when you're grooming him, that's a good time to pay attention. Make sure he's not a number seven or a number five. So I, ring, I run D ring harnesses in the woods Right here's a spot where that front breast strap sits. And I have to pay attention to that, uh, can cause a sore. Now I just got new pony yokes that are extra wide. Hopefully that'll uh, eliminate that issue. Uh, let's go see Elvis for a minute. Maybe. Let's just go right in the stall with him. You go first. Elvis, you're wasting hay, son. Back. Well, it's mostly gone. Back. You can tell we haven't been in the woods in a while. My bank account can tell it too. But Elvis, because he's wide, he had a little bit of... The hair was missing right here. Let's duck under him and go to the other side. Get over, LV boy. Is it there? Yeah, he's mostly... Yeah, right here. Uh, get out of my own light. Right here. The hair is... Shall... What happened? Hell. <laughs> <laughs> he scratched you with his hay. <laughs> I breathed in some hay. <laughs> uh, the hair was a little short here, and I've actually had a sore on a horse here. Um, but I think we have, and it's always been Elvis because he's so darn wide. Um, but I think we eliminated that with a wider jockey yoke. Um, go around Elvis's back and I'll show something. I'll put his hay back in his manger. LV. Now, Elvis hasn't been groomed yet today, but Nick's going to be at the... Where the britching goes is another spot. Uh, 
Elvis had a little bit of a mark there. I'll tell you what though, if a horse is wearing a well-fitted D-ring harness, you should never even get the hair rubbed off back there. That britching hangs loose a lot of times. But back to the task at hand. Let's get Mage. Good boy. Hey. Keep grooming him and checking everything. You know, a lot of times your back pad sits heavy on a horse, so you want to really clean that area up. Anywhere the harness touches the horse, two things. One, you want it really clean so you don't get uh, dirt and stuff under that, between the harness and the horse that can cause the sore. You know, kind of like having something inside your sock drives you nuts and can cause a sore foot. Now, notice when I brush a horse, I keep, I use the tools, I'm right-handed, I keep the tools in one hand. With the other hand, I, I always put it in a certain position. And I can feel what the horse is doing. I can feel how he's moving. If he wants to move over and step into me, I know it's coming and I can get out of the way or push him off balance, whatever I want to do. Now right here, see, I have this arm right up here. And when I'm bent over in sort of a vulnerable spot, getting the inside of his Gaskins here, I know what he's up to. I can feel it coming. Clean him up a little here. See what I mean? I got my right hand up there and that's not just leaning because I'm lazy, which I am. That's leaning so he shows me what's going on. So now we did the horse. Let's do his tail. Nick, this is Mage. And I think he's wearing a size six shoe there. That probably covers about about a square foot all told. If that foot, if and he's got four feet. Now if each foot covers a square foot, what does his tail cover? His ass. His tail covers his ass. No. <laughs> oh. Uh, this is what I brush a tail with. And I'm sure there's better ways. This is what I've always done. And this is my technique. Top, start at the top again, of course. I get all these hairs here, and I pull it to the side a little bit, and I get those hairs. And then I start on one side, and I just brush straight down. And I get all that twisted hair that's not smooth, and, and I smooth that out as I'm brushing. You'll pull a little hair if a horse hasn't had this done much. Now this horse has been groomed regular, so I'm not pulling much hair. Get done with one side, you do the other. And I take my hand that's not holding the tool and I, I run it even with the tool. Can you show them that? And when I'm brushing straight down, this is how I do it. Put my hands together and I do this kind of motion. Brush straight down. You also want to watch their reaction on the tail. You know, maybe they got pinworms or something if they're really itchy on the tail. Um, of course, you want to watch it we're on the crouper and make sure there's no sores there. Now, after I did that, like I said, I started on the top, brush everything I can see, and then I take two hands and I brush straight down. After I do that, I take the whole tail in one hand. Now, I've got a big hand and he's got a fairly thin tail. But then I take the curry comb and I brush sections and I pull little sections down one at a time and I get all the straw and sawdust and everything out of there. And I pull one section down at a time until the part that's already brushed is bigger and the part that hasn't been brushed is smaller. And I kind of work my fingers a little bit so I'm always working toward the middle of the tail. And then 
I do the opposite side. I pull, I hold the tail in the opposite hand and just, just a few hairs at a time. And I keep brushing them, pulling this down. So the whole tail's brushed. That's a nice, pretty clean tail. And that's as good as we can do without water. Now there are some other steps that I do occasionally. Like I said, I wash them daily. Uh, first step, this is a great tip right here. If your horse has the beginnings of any sore or fungus or even a tiny little collar sore up here, uh, even an abrasion or a cut, when you cold hose them and when you wash them every day, nothing will heal that faster than medicated Selsun Blue. And there is a store brand also. I mean, I, I think the Selsun Blue is better, but make sure you get the, the good, the medicated stuff. They make a cheaper version. But you just put that right on there, and you can't imagine how quickly something heals. I, my vet taught me that trick, and I'll tell you, I've... It's been awesome. I'll bet you I haven't had to use this, thankfully. I'll bet you it would cl clean uh, scratches pretty quickly also. But any type of, maybe another horse bit him or something, uh, any Selsun Blue will really cure that up in a hurry. So that's a product I, I do use. And I don't necessarily go, of course, this is expensive, so I don't use it in a regular shampoo fashion. It, it's not vanity. I'm not using this to clean the horse. I'm using it in a target area to get rid of a, a, a sore or a, uh, a fungus or anything like that. There's something else I do that goes with grooming. I'll oil their feet fairly often, especially on a dry year in the summer, especially if they don't have a lot of moisture. Uh, I use Yoder's Hoof Builder. It doesn't matter. I think absorbing makes a problem. A uh, problem? A product. Uh, there's one called Rainmaker. And I'm sure Farnham makes a product. Um, I don't think the brand of your product is as important as putting some oil on their feet uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the dry months and do it every once in a while. I like to put something like this on after... Uh, after they've been shot, it helps close those old nail holes right up. And everything's nice and clean, but that's what it is. Just an applicator brush there. This is kind of a beeswax material, I think. I relate that to your work shoes. It's important to oil them once in a while. I don't really care what you use. I think if you use anything, you know, Red Wing oil or Obernoffs or uh, the the... Snow seal, any of it. As long as you use something regularly, you're, you're helping yourself. Uh, oh, once in a while, I'll uh, I'll soap them uh, before a show I want to look at. I try not to do that too often. You'll get dry skin. You can irritate the horse. Uh, there's a million shampoos out there. I use the soft, old-fashioned... Uh, Ivory, I think it is, dish soap. I don't know, I have it in the other room. Um, Dawn, Dawn. Do, do you, not Ultra Dawn, the Dawn dish soap. Uh, I also make a fly spray out of that too, and it helps it stick. But uh, once in a while, especially their tails, I'll, I'll wash their tails in a soap just to get the stains out. But generally, we don't put much of anything on them. When I go to a horse pull... I found this somewhere. Peppy. World champion Peppy coat conditioner. And it's probably a gimmick, but it does shine them up good. And it smells great. Smell that? <laughs> it does. It smells really good. Not that that matters, but, you know, maybe if you're on a horse show, it might matter to the judge. And, you know, I like the public to see it. But look at that little shine there. I just apply that and I take a rag. I don't have a rag handy, but I'll use one of my gloves. Smooth it out a little and look at that shine. That stuff works pretty well. I like it and it's easy to apply. Just, just what I showed you right there. Now we're going plowing. I don't know if it's too important for him to look slick. And of course the old standard 
feels like we got to get more of show sheen. Uh, that'll shine them right up also. That's the old standard. But I'm not here to promote products. Uh, but, you know, if I'm at a pole, I do. And, and I, I shine the harnesses up also. And I use a, a cleaner. And, you know, I just like to look good out in public. Uh, especially with good looking horses. Like you. I'm trying to think what we can add to that, Nick. What do you think? Can't think of anything. Is there anything different we do out in public we don't at home besides the no. extra grooming? I guess one thing I'll say about grooming a horse, especially one like old Jim down there that's a mess all the time, uh, it takes time. I, I'd rather take five days and one grooming each day to get them clean and, and try to do it all at once, if I can. I mean... If something's coming up and you have a filthy horse and you need them to look good, then that's one thing. But, you know, if you're just working them every day, give it a few days. And, you know, especially maybe you bought a horse at an auction and he's got the fertilizer stuck right to him. You know, the manure stuck to him or something. Um, or they've been outside. And, you know, get what you can each day. And, and it'll get a little better each day. Particularly the tails are like that. Um, but the main points are... Get underneath the harness. Boy, that stuff does smell good. Get underneath the harness. The collar bed is particularly important. And when you're cold rinsing a horse, the collar bed is really important. Cool that right down. That'll avoid sores. But, uh, yeah, look under the anywhere the harness rubs. And, uh, it's an inspection as much as anything, you know. It's not vanity as much as, an, as it is an inspection. Make sure everything's healthy. You know, make sure there's no abrasions, there's no lumps, there's no big hocks or anything like that. Um, you can also feel swellings, or even if they have a sore spot, you know. We saw one last year. You couldn't run your hand down the back like this because he was hurting, and a uh, horse chiropractor fixed him up, but, you know. Just watch his reaction when you brush him. If, if he doesn't like that, there might be something wrong. So, I guess that's what I can tell you about grooming. That's how we do it. Uh, feel free to leave other suggestions. I know there's lots of other products. Fact is, we have them. I mean, oh, they're all down here in the shelf, but we have this. Actually, I'll use this once in a while on a hose. Hose screws right into that. We have sweat scrapers I, I seldom use i actually leave the cold water right on them when i hose them and that uh as that water evaporates that's what helps them cool oh here it is where's that green pail here it is I'm trying to do too much at once but yeah there's another sweat scraper that wrap this is stuff we take to town i think um i kind of like this brush this style brush still i don't like it as well as the curry comb maybe once the horse is shed out and smooth that's nice i'm just not as comfortable with that as a curry comb and it's probably just a matter of being used to it always keep a few rags around or towels or whatever That's what I've got to add to it. Now I should, uh, I should oil his feet, but he's going to work plowing right now. So I'm just gonna get mud covered. I'll oil him uh, probably tonight after he dries off before Betty by. <laughs> well, thanks, Nick. Mm -hmm. So here's the plan for today. Red boy here, Mage, and his teammate Sailor are going to work plowing on a 12 inch walking plow. They did that yesterday and they're going to do it again today. And 
Nick is going to work Elvis single on a work sled. The one I had, uh, you saw on the team the other day, I guess it was Ziggy and Zodiac took to it. Elvis is going to go put a lot of miles on that single and shed a little weight. And then uh, once these guys get tired plowing, I don't want to overdo it. They're, they're not in shape yet. And once they get tired plowing, they'll get tied up for a rest. And these two, Zodiac and Jim, they'll come out and uh, and do some plowing. And then once they get tired, they'll go rest, and these guys will. And that'll probably be about the end of the day. I always say Jim's our filthiest horse, but and he is. But here's why you want to be careful of haulers and, and leaving them on all the time and never giving them any relief. We've owned Jim, I don't know, two and a half years or something. And, and I just can't get rid of that mark, you know, and it's not from here. It, but worse, he's got pole evil, you know, and, and it just, we had it healed and it comes back and he's often sore up here. And that's probably from a halter just growing into his head, you know. Um, take it off when you can. I, I get tie salts, but we've had, we've had tie salts my whole life and we never had marks like that on their nose. You know, watch your halter a little bit. Make your, sure your halters are in good shape. That helps, you know, not a rough halter on the bridge of their nose. And, you know, horses that work, take it off when they work if you can. Um, just to give them a little relief from it if they're never out of the halter. Uh, turn them out. Always take it off turning them out. I commented yesterday on a video and I said there are very few things that I'll say always or never, or it's a complete necessity or a completely unnecessary. It's a complete necessity to take that halter off every time you turn a horse out. You don't want them to get stuck on a fence post or a tree or another horse's foot stuck in here, who knows what, and uh, cause a lot of issues. That That's one that I, that's a rule. You know, a lot of times I say, Look how smart that horse is. He backs right up there in the stall and poops, so we don't have to sweep it. <laughs> but I always say rules are for ch fools and children, you know. I'm a bit of an anarchist. I'm not big on rules, but that's a rule we adhere to. Uh, we'll talk about rules a little bit. You know, rules like do everything from the left of a horse. Well, that, that's good guidance, and it's a good place to start. But... You know, what if you're riding a horse on a hill and, and you can't get on the, the downhill sides on the left? You better you better be able to do it from both sides, you know. Uh, never wrap your hands. That's a very good rule, and I rarely wrap my hands, but I'm not going to say never. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll be driving a team that's a little cagey, and I'll wrap them. And I'm a little careful about it, and I know how to let go of the lines, but... Uh, I wrap them. I've got a friend, maybe the most successful horse puller there ever was, Francis Root. And Francis has a bad hand, uh, I believe from a bulldozer or an oil field accident, or maybe both. <laughs> and uh, hell, Francis wraps the hands all the way up to his elbow. And he can actually drive like that. He can let a couple wraps loose and wrap a couple more up, but he doesn't have a choice. He just, he doesn't, he can't grip after that accident. Um, I don't recommend it. Don't, don't go saying I recommend it, but I'll tell you, I'd, I'd rather wrap them, you know, once a month maybe I'll wrap my hands on the lines. I'd rather do that now and then than I would uh, have a pair get away from me and slip through my hands, I guess. I guess we're going to wrap this one up and... We're going to look forward to shooting some more videos. We'll, we'll shoot a little more footage throughout the day as we're working these different teams. Kind of piece that together here at the end. And um, we got some fun stuff coming up for you that we're going to film tomorrow and release over the next few weeks. Thanks, folks. Have a good day.
Let's stop here while we're plowing pretty good and the camera's on. Cutting a nice 12 inch furrow. Cutting a nice depth furrow. Got a good clean furrow wall. Horses are walking good. This team stands real good until I said that. They don't rub their heads together. They don't haul their heads out to the outside. And as I say, it may just did a little bit, but I think my dog's over there doing something he's interested in. Uh, they hold up the heel chains well. I'm always harping on holding them eveners up. This is Rusty uh, Van Etten's team, and that's how he teaches them to hold the eveners up. Rusty says, not so tight they're leaning into it like they are on a pulling sled. Just a little slack so the eveners just hit the ground. That's what Rusty always taught me. And, and mind you, Rusty only has one hand, and he has to have them behave. And he says, if they're leaning tight and one horse swishes a fly, the other feels that and thinks it's time to go. But if they're just slack enough to where the eveners hit the ground, like they're doing, that's how Rusty trains them. One horse can switch a fly or kick his foot at a fly or something like that. And the other one won't feel it. And they're a lot more likely to stay in place. So, you know, what I say about Rusty Van Etten, you know, he only has one arm and, and uh, the other one's gone almost at the shoulders. And because of that, Rusty has to treat horses the way the rest of us should treat horses. I like that saying, and I think that really applies there. And uh, we should all learn from a guy like Rusty, and, and a lot of his techniques have really helped me. You know, I, I've tried to get through life muscling horses around, and uh, the closer I got to Rusty through the years, the more I realized muscling horses doesn't have to be. You can do it with some finesse and some smarts. Well, here's one team starting their work day. Nick's going to go start a single, and when these guys get tired, probably around lunchtime, the other team's going to come out for a couple hours and fill their shoes, and then these guys will be back out. We're going to we're gonna work some horses today, by golly, aren't we, Nick? Yep. Yeah, all right. You excited about it? Sure. You mean sure? You mean hell yeah? Sailor and Mage are being good boys for us today, doing a good job plowing. Here's your tip of the day when plowing. Look at this line of draft from the horse's collar right back through to the eveners all the way to the front of that plow point. Nice straight line. Now, if I had them hooked directly, hooked the heel chains up closer and hooked closer to the plow, we'd be pulling the plow up out of the ground. Horses today are taller than when they designed these plows 120, 150 years ago. And uh, what that means is we have to hook them out longer to achieve that point of draft. To hook them longer, I hook them longer on the heel chains and I hook them longer between the plow and the eveners. I'm using this thing right here I uh, borrowed from my buddy Jim Perrin and that'll keep you a good line of draft. And here's a welcome sight. It's Nick and Elvis. Elvis is out here working, getting himself in shape. <laughs> Who knows why he stopped. And uh, Nick brought me some lunch. That's a welcome sight. And I have, ooh, got back in a little. Sailor and Mage on the Syracuse plow. Can't figure out my phone. There we go. Elvis is coming toward us. We gotta make a decision here. Who's more likely to stand? Uh, I think we're gonna let Elvis stand. He's, he's a good old boy. That's good, Nick. And we're gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this team. For one, Elvis has uh, done a lot of this. And for two, uh, this isn't my team and we sure as heck don't wanna run away. And with Elvis, uh, even if he ran, which he won't, it would be a little less of a runaway with a single horse as opposed to a team. Uh, he's not going to run. He's trustworthy while Nick runs my sandwiches over. Right, Nick? Yeah. You're going to run my sandwiches over here? Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
So three of the six that we're keeping worked are getting worked today. Of course, Rusty's back home working Amos. He's working a horse down where he lives. And uh, this team gets tired. Hell, they're tough. They're not tired yet, but give them a few more bouts. They'll be tired, and we're going to put the other team on the plow for a while. And maybe put this team on late in the day. This is what we do. We work horses. Especially fat ones like Elvis. <laughs> He's got to lose some weight. Better for his health and gets him closer to where he should be for pulling. Thanks, son. You're welcome. Coors Banquet Beer, huh? Yeah. Let me zoom in here. Zoom out. How you liking today? It's nice and warm. I like it. Uh -huh, me too. Good bunch of horses. We're having fun. Yeah. Back to work tomorrow. <laughs> All right. We'll keep on keeping on and have a sandwich. Working some horses. Nick's helping. Brought me out a sandwich. You wouldn't think I'd pick on him if he brought me a sandwich, but I'm going to anyway. You're wearing your boots. Have you gone Amish? You're like that don't tell the bishop guy. Can you dance like him? Not really. I see. You don't have the moves. Yeah, yeah those boots probably cost a thousand dollars. Don't tell the bishop about my secret cell phone. That would be terribly bad. Okay, we'll talk at you later. Hey, before we talk at you later, do your touchdown dance. All right. Come on, Nick, do a little dance and then you drink a little water. Yeah. No dancing? No, thanks. Tell a good joke. Can't think of any of Oh my gosh, camera shy. <laughs> Elvis loves the camera, he loves himself. We well, appreciate you, Nick, and appreciate the sandwich. Problem. Appreciate the horses. They're going to get a bite to eat in a moment. Hello to Stefano from Alfred State. I ah, appreciate you. Hey, let's talk about length of hitch. When on a walk and plow, I hook my horses out long on the heel chains, and I hook a nice distance between the eveners and the plow. Thank you, Jim Perrin, for that piece. Uh, what that does, that allows you a little slack, and you can steer. If your horses aren't walking just perfect, you can still cut a good furrow. You'll see that in this little clip where Sailor stepped out of the furrow for a minute and then right back in. In his defense, that was his first time ever on a walking plow and his first time working in three months. But point is, we still turned a good furrow even though he stepped out of the furrow for a moment.